Hello YouTube, my name is Josh and I want to welcome you to our channel. So Flickstake is all about game streaming and cloud gaming and today we're here to talk about Vortex. So a bunch of you have approached us recently and said, hey, it's been a few months since you guys did anything with Vortex. Have they gotten any better? Have they gotten worse? Where are they at right now? So that's what this video is all about. We're checking back in with Vortex to see if they've improved because if you check out our original video, the basic takeaway was that it wasn't very good on the computer, but it was pretty decent on Android. So is that still the same today? Have they changed anything? Well, we're about to find out. So let's jump right in and take a look at some gameplay from Vortex. Now, the first thing worth noting is that what you see on the screen right now was pretty common as we tested Vortex. In every single game that we tried over a range of different days, there was always a queue that we had to wait through. Now the one that you're looking at right now isn't that bad, but there were several times when the queue was 30 or 40 people long, and that could represent a wait time of 30 minutes to an hour. Right now you're looking at some footage of H1Z1. It's a popular battle royale shooter that's played quite a bit through Vortex, so we decided to test it. And we noticed pretty quickly that the input latency was extreme. So it's doable, like you could walk around and you could look around, but it wasn't smooth at all and we wouldn't have been able to react very well to anybody else. So we decided to play around with the settings and see if anything was a little bit better. We tested lowering the resolution and adjusting the graphics, but the latency was still there. We even went as far as testing the lowest settings possible and it didn't help at all with the latency. The only thing that we accomplished was that the game now looked a lot worse. So all in all, H1Z1 is playable, it does run, but it's not as smooth or as responsive as we'd like to see from a game like this. Up next we decided to try the popular survival game Rust, and I think the results will speak for themselves. The lag and the latency is quite pronounced. As of today, Rust would be completely unplayable through Vortex. Okay, so let's talk bottom line. Should you get Vortex if you're primarily gonna be playing shooters and other action games that need quick reflexes and low latency? Well, the answer, I think you'll agree, is no. It doesn't perform well for those games. We did experience a lot of input latency and we had some frame drops that got in the way of the experience. So if that's the type of game that you're looking to play, then it's not going to be great on the computer. Now, if you're going to be playing games that don't need fast reflexes and that aren't going to basically break if there's a few drop frames, so we're talking strategy titles mostly or card games, stuff like that, then Vortex is probably fine for those things on the computer, and that's something to consider. Now, there are a couple other things that you should take into account if you're considering trying Vortex. One is that the Windows 10 version of Vortex, like the app that you get from the Microsoft Store, was still extremely wonky. Like so much so that we didn't really even want to show it in the video because almost every single game that we tried to play broke in some way. So a lot of the time we couldn't even sign into Steam to play the game. So we couldn't even get into the game and it was just really bad. The videos that we showed you were from the Chrome browser, and if you're going to try Vortex on the computer, we highly recommend that you do it through Chrome. It was much more stable to play that way. So that's one point to keep in mind. The other point is that as we played over the last few days, we ran into a lot of queues. So meaning that you go and you hit play to jump into your game, and you get stuck in a queue waiting for a machine to become available. And those queue times ranged anywhere from 10 minutes up until you know 45 minutes in some cases. And that's a lot of time to wait when you're ready to just play your game. So that's something to keep in mind. It seems like queues are pretty standard right now. They're under a heavy load. There's a lot of people trying to use the service. So you may have to wait quite a bit to actually get into your game. And that's something that we didn't really like, but we understand and it is correctable. So that's something to keep in mind too. Now, one last note is that if you try to play a game that's not based on Steam, so like Fortnite, for example, you are relying on Vortex to update the game every time that something new comes out for the game. So like if Fortnite gets a big update, you have to wait on Vortex to update their side of it on the servers before you can play. And historically, it takes them a few days to do that. 
So if you're somebody that values being able to play the game at the drop of a hat exactly when you want to, any day that you want, then Vortex is not really going to deliver that to you right now. It takes some time to update, so you could have some downtime because of that. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, Steam games are completely different because Steam updates them for you. So when you launch the game, if the server version needs to be updated, Steam will typically do that automatically. You're fine and good to go there. So that's it. Bottom line on the computer version, it's probably a no for action games, but it's a maybe for slower games or games that don't require fast reflexes. Now the PC is just one side of Vortex, and that's what we've talked about in this video. It's all been about the PC. The other side of Vortex is the Android side. And as a special way of saying thank you to our Patreon supporters, we've created a video that covers the Android side of Vortex, and it's just for people that support us on Patreon. And it's gonna basically showcase what it looks like right now on Android, and it's also gonna include some Fortnite gameplay. So if you're curious to see what that side of it looks like today, that's a great way of finding out. So take a look at our description. There is a link and you can visit our Patreon page and sign up and support us if you'd like to. Every single level of membership gains access to those videos and it's a great way of supporting our channel but also getting some extra stuff for yourself as well. So take a look. And that's basically it for this video. If you're not already a subscriber on YouTube, you might consider subscribing so that you gain access to more content just like this. We talk about game streaming and cloud gaming and we discuss those technologies so we're your best place to find all that information. And that's it. Until next time, you guys have a good one.